Adam Collins and Michael Vaughan, this is a Crick Buzz Chatter after the third day at Old Trafford between England and Pakistan. 14 wickets on the day, Vaughan. Let's start with this surface. It's giving us a fantastic test match. Pakistan, 244 ahead in the second innings. They've lost eight wickets. It's all happening, but it's the pitch at the middle of it all, isn't it? It's producing some fantastic test match cricket. Yeah, full credit to the ground staff here. Do you think they've had to produce three test wickets in the space of three and a half weeks? They've done a remarkable job. Test match cricket will only survive going forward if we get exciting cricket. You know, wickets play a massive part in that. And I think because there's just a little bit there for the bowler, you're never really in as a batsman. And you're always kind of keeping an eye out because you know that anything's possible in terms of a quick collapse or if a player gets in, you really are watching the way that a skillful batsman's occupying the crease and manoeuvring himself against the seams, against the spinners. Um, you know, you look back to that Shah Massoud, 150 in the first innings for Pakistan. He may have got the wicket at his best, but it was still doing plenty. Uh, that's a remarkable innings in these kind of conditions. Oli Pope was playing the blinder until he got an absolute jaffer from Nassim Shah. So you can score runs on it, but uh, I think we're in for a, a, a riveting uh, fourth day play. I'm sure the game's going to finish on the fourth day. I can't see how it goes into the fifth day. Uh, can one of the England players do what Ben Stokes did at Headley last year and get England over the line? Yeah, it certainly has all the hallmarks for a fourth Fourth day classic finish the way it's trended today. Back and forth, it's been volatile, topsy turvy, whatever adjective you want to use. But Nassim Shah started it with the trend. We thought maybe the Pakistan quicks would roll through England. It ended up being leg spin. Yasir Shah, four wickets. Shadab Khan, a couple. Um, they went through the lower order and gave Pakistan, they earned them a lead of 107. Yeah, they did. I mean, it, it was surprising. I mean, Yasir Shah yesterday got the wicket of Joe Root, but he bowled poorly. He started from the Brian Staven end today and bowled poorly, bowled short. And then all of a sudden he got that wicket of Joss Butler and he, and he sprung into his line, his length, he was spinning it square and then Shadab Khan bowling those googlies, uh, you'd have to say that they're going to be a massive threat on day four. I mean you think Mohamed Abbas, Nassim Shah, Shaheen Afridi with that new ball, uh, it's going to nip around, there's going to be seam movement, there's going to be all sorts of drama and then England are going to have to cope with two leg spinners. So someone or a couple are going to have to play uh, blinders for the England team. Um, but I just look at England's field and actually just analyse it on television about the fact that, you know, we're in a tight test match, but England shouldn't have let um, Pakistan get anywhere near 3 2 6 in the first innings. And you look at the field in today, Ben Stokes dropping a catch, Jimmy Anderson at backward point. Uh, they've just not quite been good enough in the field all week. And it will take a, a remarkable individual kind of innings tomorrow, I think, to get them over the line because, as we keep talking about, this pitch has got plenty of action in it. And ironically, I suppose, with that in mind, how poorly England did field, it was a piece of ground fielding which almost broke the back of Pakistan today. There were early wickets, so it was probably always going to be early wickets with the new ball either side of the tee interval. But Dom Sibley runs out of Saad Shafiq, and that started a, a fall of wickets. I think four of them fell in the last 45 minutes. Yeah, it was uh, classic uh, test match cricket. You know, Pakistan, I think they were a little bit caught in two minds of how to play it. Do they play the attritional way and try and bat long, or do they try and blast a few? Well, they opted uh, on, on the blast, and it kind of gave England a chance to take some wickets. Uh, they, they then had Ben Stokes turning to the captain and just saying, I'm bowling. You know, it doesn't matter about me and Jay. I'm going to bowl. Typical Ben Stokes. Uh, has he done damage to that hip? Again, going to the next test, only time will tell. But he gets a couple of wickets. And I thought that actually exposed a couple of England's bowlers today. Um, Don Best didn't have a great day with uh, with his offspin. Joffre Archer, five overs, bowling around 83, 84 miles an hour. I think England are going to have to find out quickly what kind of bowler Joffre Archer is. Is he this 90 miles an hour bowler? Or is he an English style 84 to 86 miles an hour? bowler if he is well that's fine um, you can deal with that but I think they need to find out quickly because when you got four seamers you really do need one of them to be a little bit different a bit quicker and that's why Ben Stokes had to grab the ball out of the captain's hands I think it's a risk uh, you could also argue Chris Wokes only bowling five overs getting two wickets and looked like he was going to get a wicket any ball uh, was underutilized as well so a few strange tactics but uh, you know you can't really criticize too much it's uh, it's been a, a fantastic test match to watch uh, and I think we're in for a classic last Day. So Pakistan one three seven for eight in their second innings. You mentioned Joffrey Archer, the one bouncer who bowled at 88 mile an hour, um, took out a batsman and put him on his bum. So I mean, it's not as though he hasn't got the capacity to do it, but that will be a debate I'm sure we'll have between the test matches. Uh, let's go into the hotspot, Vaughan.
In the hot spot, Chris Wakes. We, we talked about him last week being the quiet beetle, the, the, the guy who a lot of attention isn't invested in. But today, once again, when England needed a player to take wickets and to go through the top order, he did it instantaneously. Two wickets in his first few overs, and, and there he is. My, my question to you, is he ready to lead his attack? Well, in English conditions, yes. With the Duke ball, you look at his record here in England. Uh, he's got a, a really wonderful record. He moves the ball, he bowls the perfect length. So in England, absolutely overseas. He's probably got a few new skills that he needs to develop. Um, but he's just uh, he's one of, he's the coffee maker in the team. I think for the last seven or eight weeks in lockdown, he's had his you know machine that you could go and spend a few quid on buying one in these posh coffee shops. Well, he's brought his own and he's delivering all the coffees to all the players in the morning and he's delivering out in the middle. He's had a, a terrific uh, time of it this summer. Um, with the bat, I thought he looked pretty good today as well. It's the first time we've seen him play with control with the bat for a long period of time. And when you're at number seven, uh, you have to be able to deliver that kind of innings. Uh, he's just one of those players that he's so quiet and he's He's such a good lad. I looked at that last hour of play and I just wonder if, if it was a bit more, you know, in the face of the opposing team, in the face of the captain, you know, maybe he could have gone to the skipper and go, give me the ball. You know, give me the ball. I can make a difference in this last half an hour of play. He's not that kind of character. So you have to deal with that. Um, you have to accept that. And sometimes you have to read the play just that little bit better. Uh, and maybe Joe missed a trick there by not bringing Chris Wokes on a little bit sooner because he did keep bowling Don Best and Don Best just had... He had an afternoon, he got that early wicket and thought, this is your moment, Dom, go on, get three or four quick ones. And he just bowled it a bit too slowly at times. He bowled into the pitch, which was bouncing, and they played him nicely off the back foot. Uh, and, and, and they scored too fast off the off spinner. So I think he can underutilise Chris Wokes today to only have bowled five overs. He picked up two quick wickets. Um, not saying it's going to be the major difference of the, the result at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the game. I've got a funny feeling we might be talking about fielding because it's the chances that really has cost England this week. And the other man, of course, picking up two wickets with Stuart Broad. One at the start, Masood for a duck down the leg side and one at the end of the day when Joe Root brought him back. All right, pressing fast forward. Tomorrow, Vaughan, England have two wickets to get, but let's assume they get them relatively quickly. I say that. Yassi Ashar did make a test century uh, when, I, when we saw him batting in Adelaide last year. him on of here. Course. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, but at some point tomorrow, England will have a chase, and it'll be a gettable chase. Um, you've opened the batting a lot, Vaughan, in test cricket. How crucial is it that the two openers for England... Dom Sibley and Rory Burns lay a foundation, especially in a modestly sized chase. Yeah, you, you need that uh, confident boost into the dressing room with a 30 for none. You know, and if they get to that level, uh, I think England will have a chance. But this new ball partnership of uh, Abbas and uh, Shaheen Afridi are, are, are magnificent. And it's going to be so difficult because Mohamed Abbas will wobble the ball and it'll go either way. And he'll bowl a decent length. Uh, if England bat out the crease, we've seen already, Rizwan will stand up to the stumps to get them back in the crease. So I think that initial six over burst that Mohamed Abbas will produce, maybe more, will potentially decide the test match. If England can have two players in by the time the leg spinners come on, they have a chance. If they've got two new players in by the time the leg spinners come on, they've got absolutely no chance. This is shaping up as an absolute beauty. Don't miss a moment of it on the CrickBuzz live blog tomorrow. And whatever happens, we'll be here, of course, on CrickBuzz Chatter. Adam Collins and Michael Vaughan.